Hello, children. It's me, Eric. And today we're going to talk about LED lights versus soft boxes and which ones you should actually buy. In a recent video, I reviewed the set of soft boxes that I use every day for lighting. I started that one out by saying that cheap on-camera LEDs are complete crap, which I still think is mostly true. But I wanted to do a little bit more fair and detailed comparison between the two. Like any tool you might use for something creative, each light has its own use in different situations. So today, I want to take some of the hassle out of finding the right lighting tool for your videos. We're going to compare your average cheap on-camera LED and the legendary softbox. Now something I want to mention before we get started is I'm doing this video because I I wish somebody had told me this stuff several years ago when I started taking filmmaking more seriously. It would have saved me a lot of hassle, a lot of headache, and made me produce much better videos. So I'm doing this for you. So I want to do this video by just talking about the pros and cons of the LED versus the softbox. And we're going to start with the pros of these LED lights. All right, so an on-camera LED, there are some advantages here. And the first one is the fact that this thing is very portable. This is really important if you are into journalistic filmmaking or if you're vlogging, you're out and about, you always have a light on you that'll work when you're in a pinch. The second pro is the fact that these things are battery powered. I mean, this kind of goes hand in hand with being portable, but the finer point that I want to make here is that a battery powered light is easy to move around when you're out in the field, but it's also easy to move around when you're in a studio setting like you would be for a video like this for YouTube or Facebook or something. The other advantage is that they're small. And what that means is you can put this light in places that you wouldn't be able to put a big soft box or even a bigger LED light. This could be used to light up like a piece of a background or maybe as a hair light or as an accent light. Just because this isn't enough to be a full on key main light doesn't mean it can't be effective in filmmaking. And lastly, this is kind of a small one, but changing the color of the output of these is pretty easy. Since they're LEDs, they don't get hot. You can put nice gels in front of them. And most of them come with these little sliding mechanisms that let you change the temperature of the light a little bit. However, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you of the follies of these little 160 LED on camera lights. There's a lot of things I don't like about them. To start with, the actual output of these, like the amount of light they put out, isn't that high. Now they look really bright, and the light's very direct, but the truth is there's not enough here to really fill a room the way that you can with a bigger light like, say, a softbox. One of the disadvantages of being a very small light is the fact that the light is super direct. And so what this means is that it's gonna cast really harsh shadows and it'll create more of what they call hot spots. So this occurs a lot of times on like skin or any kind of brighter color object, the light just gets blown out in certain areas and it just doesn't look very flattering. These lights are basically square flashlights. Also, if you are a true cheapskate filmmaker, like most of us YouTube folks are, you don't actually own any light stands. And so realistically, that means you're gonna take one of these and you're gonna mount it directly on your camera. And this severely limits the amount of creativity you can have with your lighting. You're basically stuck with just one flat, straight on angle. But certainly the actual worst part of these LED lights and the reason that I don't use them personally is the color reproduction. So there's a scale for artificial lights called CRI. It's the color rendering index. Now it goes from one to a hundred and most, you know, photography lights are gonna give you a rating. They say a good light should be 90 plus. If I had to guess, I would put these at about 14 they're pretty bad. Here's an example of what I mean by that. These lights have a weird way of adding sort of a yellow wash to people's skin and making things look kind of green and just off colored. It's just not flattering and trust me, it's not easy to fix that kind of stuff in post. Not as easy as you'd think. But enough of this crap, let's talk about soft boxes because I think this is a much better option for most people. So we'll start where we left off with color reproduction. So when you buy even a cheap soft box, most of them are gonna come with a CFL bulb that you just screw in there. The beauty of these things is the color reproduction is generally pretty good. So long as you're getting a daylight color bulb, anything you put in front of it is gonna look pretty accurate and it's gonna be a much more flattering tone, especially on things like skin. The cool part is, is since most of these soft boxes are just a standard light socket, you could replace that bulb with anything you wanted. Heck, they even make LED chip bulbs that are a little bit brighter in output, but they're still pretty accurate in terms of color. Another thing is the output. One soft box, even a cheap one, is almost always enough to fill a small room. And so in a setting like this, the kind of YouTube studio, having that much output means you can actually get a good look 
look no matter what time of day it is, which means your videos can look more consistent and more professional. Another beautiful thing about these is the fact that the light itself is soft. And all that means is that the light that's coming out of these is being diffused across that big white sheet. And as it's coming in and landing on faces and objects, it just looks a little more gentle. In other words, it's not casting those harsh shadows and it's not making those hot spots like I was talking about earlier. This is also one of the advantages of being a big light source. Like I was saying before, these small LEDs come out very direct, but as you spread the light over a wider area, it comes out softer. Another advantage, depending on who you are, is the fact that these don't have batteries to deal with. In other words, they're never gonna die on you during a shoot, you just plug them in and they're always working. And finally, because you're a cheapskate, this is really important. Softboxes almost always come with a light stand. So in other words, you have a lot more creative freedom and a lot more options to light things that put them around in your little studio environment. All right, so I've said a lot of nice things about softboxes because I believe in them, but there are some drawbacks with these as well. To start with, they are big, and what that means for you is that you can't put them in every place that you would want. You can't really use them as much of an accent light, they're going to be more of a key light. Next, and this may be a big one depending on what your filmmaking setup is, but they do take a few minutes to set up and to tear them down. Subsequently, that means that these lights are not particularly good for the true run and gun style of filmmaking. These are pretty much exclusive to like the studio setting like I'm doing right now. And the last con for these cheap soft boxes is most of them don't come with any way to adjust the amount of output. You turn them on and you get what you get. Now, of course, you can compensate with this though by just moving them closer or further away, depending on how much light you need. With all that in mind, I think that people are a little too gentle when they do these comparison videos. So I just wanna be real with you. These cheap LED lights are kind of just crap. I wouldn't waste your money. For most people in most situations, if you're making videos for YouTube and Facebook, that kind of thing, go get yourself a cheap soft box and you will save yourself a ton of hassle and you'll get way better images. All right guys, that is all I have to say about that. I hope you enjoyed this. If you got something out of it, you know, leave the thumbs up, subscribe, all that jazz. Also remember, you can watch all these videos on my Facebook page as well. So thank you guys. That's all I have to say.